Tonight, the coronavirus emergency is spiraling into uncharted territory as the number of dead surges in the city. The CDC just told everyone in New York, New Jersey, and Connecticut more than 32 million Americans do not travel. In the past 24 hours, the city recorded more than 200 more deaths. The number of dead now above 600. The number of confirmed cases in New York City now more than 30,000. And there are more, now more than 53,000 confirmed cases in New York State and more than 760 deaths. New Jersey has more than 11,000 cases and 140 deaths in Connecticut, upwards of 1,500 cases and 33 patients lost. Some hope did arrive inside these brown boxes today. Mayor Bill de Blasio picked up more than 250,000 surgical masks at the UN. Those will be going to first responders. Our team is in place following every new development for you. We do start with News 4's Adam Harding at JFK Airport with a new travel advisory the CDC just issued. Adam, there's been back and forth on this all day. And the big question right now is how do you enforce this for these 32 million Americans? There are a number of new questions with this travel advisory that will essentially take place from now for the next two weeks. But what a day it was. First talk of a federal quarantine that was criticized. Now tonight, a new travel advisory. I'd rather not do it, but we may need it. The president now backing down from a possible tri-state quarantine, saying it won't be necessary. Instead, he's asking the CDC to issue a strong travel advisory to be administered by the governors. Yeah, I think there should be a travel advisory, yes. You know, like I said, he's got to do something. You know, nobody has the answer. This is a civil war kind of, uh, this is a civil war kind of discussion. Governor Cuomo late Saturday blasting the idea of a quarantine, questioning if it was even legal. This is, would be a declaration of war on states, a federal declaration of war. State lawmakers appeared to be caught off guard. I literally saw the story as I was walking into this room. I've got no more color on it. These are extraordinary times to take extraordinary measures, but we're also a, a nation of laws. New York right now remains the epicenter of the crisis here in the U.S. Right now we have a pinpointed risk that we need to address and we need to be very serious. And that risk is called New York City. Meantime, Rhode Island's National Guard and state police now taking the unprecedented steps of pulling over drivers with New York tags in an effort to keep the virus from spreading. They're checking train stations, buses, even going door to door. Anyone coming to Rhode Island in any way from New York must be quarantined. Now Governor Cuomo threatening to sue the state, calling the new policy unconstitutional. So, Jen, some really fast-moving developments throughout the day, and the big question tonight is how do you enforce this new travel advisory that goes into effect immediately issued by the Centers for Disease Control out of Atlanta? Meantime, New Jersey's governor tonight calling this a non-binding issue, saying that it does not change the rules that have now been in effect in New Jersey for over a week. Live at JFK, I'm Adam Harding, News 4, New York. Adam, thank you for tracking it all for us. Tonight, we have learned MTA chairman and CEO Pat Foy tested positive for the virus. This is video of Foy. This is a press conference on Wednesday. That was the last day he was in the office. We're told he did not have symptoms at that point, but was following the social distancing policy. According to the MTA, Foy is in self-isolation at home and is feeling okay. Two MTA transit workers have died from the virus. The pandemic is now impacting the presidential primary here in New York. Governor Cuomo moved it from April 28th to June 23rd. That's the same day as the primary for state legislative and congressional races. Well, the virus is taking its toll on first responders. In the last 48 hours, the NYPD has lost three of its members to COVID-19. The department held a procession today for a detective who died from the virus. And tonight, the department is taking action to protect its force. News 4's Miles Miller's at the Javits Center with those exclusive details. Miles. Well, Jen, the top brass in the NYPD obviously very shaken by the death of its first officer tonight offering an unprecedented move, reasonable accommodation for officers who have underlying health conditions. Hours after losing its first uniformed officer to coronavirus, the NYPD is 
is changing course. We are first responders. We are at a higher exposure rate than others. A memo reviewed exclusively by NBC News revealing officers with certain pre-existing medical conditions and those who are pregnant can now request reasonable accommodations to modify their assignments. The change comes as the department reels from the death of Detective Cedric Dixon, a 23-year veteran who worked in Harlem and died from the coronavirus. Saturday, more than 4,000 officers were out sick. That's 12% of the department. Some 696 officers and NYPD employees have tested positive for the virus. You just don't often have the opportunity to isolate. You go to the danger. Also at risk for exposure, FDNY EMTs, some sleeping in their cars to protect their families from the virus. A lot of members who are, are exhausted, they've been working multiple shifts every day. Uh, they're not going home to sleep. And a shift for city hospitals. Governor Andrew Cuomo working to open three hospitals designated for COVID-19 patients only. Concentrated help for a growing problem. Come Monday, the Javits Convention Center, the 12th largest in the country, becomes the country's largest temporary hospital. We're live on Manhattan's west side. I'm Miles Miller, News 4 New York. Miles, thank you. And there's more help coming Monday as well. The USNS Comfort is on its way to New York to help battle coronavirus. The hospital ship has 1,000 hospital beds and a crew of nearly 1,200 U.S. Navy members. It will serve as a floating hospital for non-virus patients. Meanwhile, in the city, four more temporary hospitals are being set up. They will be located in Brooklyn, the Bronx, Queens, and Staten Island. Governor Cuomo says the sites will add another 4,000 beds. Today, another spike in cases on Long Island. In Nassau County, eight more people died, bringing the death toll to 35, with more than 5,500 COVID-19 patients there. In Suffolk County, seven more deaths, a total of 37 lives lost, over 4,100 people there tested positive. Well, starting tomorrow, New Jersey's FEMA-run testing centers will run on a staggered schedule. Bergen County College will open tomorrow at 8 a.m. More than 11,000 people have tested positive in New Jersey. State officials announced 32 new deaths today, and that brings the total there to 140. The North is really feeling the stress right now. Uh, so our goal is to work with the hospitals, uh, increase their critical care uh, capacity, give them the equipment uh, that they need to the degree that we have it. New Jersey has the second highest case count in the country, only behind New York. Well, nurses are the foot soldiers in the coronavirus fight, and they are pleading for more protective equipment. Healthcare workers gathered outside Jacoby Medical Center in a show of force. They say they're running out of the gloves, gowns, and masks they need to keep themselves healthy while saving lives. Cannot do that if we don't have what we need. Our, our doctors are getting sick, our nurses are getting sick, uh, so many other healthcare workers are getting sick, and you look at what we are wearing in comparison to other countries, and it's unacceptable. Earlier this week, a 40-year-old nurse at Mount Sinai Hospital died from COVID-19. His family says a lack of protective gear is to blame. The government has said it is working as quickly as possible to get more equipment to hospitals.